السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله أخو يوسف لبس عليك نور نور ما شاء الله أنت ما شاء الله احنا اليوم عندنا فطاحلة الصراحة اني سو اكسايتد يعني نقول لهم عندنا التلاتي وانتم ما شاء الله اللي يبي عندنا سداسي مش حدا تلاتي يا جماعة الهارد كله تلاتي لكن انتم خايشين بسداسي تلاتي موجود اليوم وتلاتي ان شاء الله مرة اخرى باذن الله ما شاء الله ان شاء الله بارك الله فيك هذا من ذوق والله احنا عاد دكتور فتحي هذا هو اللي بيقدم ما شاء الله عليه احنا شو مازال بنضيفه عليه نسمعه خلاص <تصفيق> ما شاء الله يقولوا لما تاخذ حمل الجماعه ريشي في نفس الوقت تاخذ افكار من 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 اشخاص مختلفين فيستفيد ان شاء الله الجميع والحمد لله المحاضره هذه مسجله فاني اعتقد المحاضرات اللي سيريس هذه حتكون ون اوف ذا توب سيريس في الليبين كارد سايتي صراحه يعني ان شاء الله ان شاء الله دكتور فتحي انت منصور تسمع فيها تسمع فيها منصور واضح ايوه واضح السلام عليكم كيف حالك فتحي السلام ورحمه الله مرحبا يوسف السلام عليكم شاء الله كويس الحمد لله الله يبارك فيك الله يبارك فيك خلاص ولوكينج فور سكرين ان شاء الله والله يعني وي سي اف اي كان اوكي احسن بس اشير ماي سكرين I can let me see a second معانا دكتورة حوا كمان السلام عليكم دكتورة حوا السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالكم كيف حال الجميع تمام والله دكتورة حوا الهيد اوف هايبر تنشن ووركينج جروب في الليبيان كارديو سوسايتي كونسلتنت فاميلي فيزيشن وتبي تعرف بالحملة الوطنية بارتفاع ضغط الدم التي تقام في في المرحلة القادمة إن شاء الله هذا الصيف يعني بنعطوها ان شاء الله خمس دقائق في البدايه تعرف بالحمله الوطنيه مش الجميع يضل عنده فكره دكتوره حوا انت التعريف الحمله الوطنيه حتعرفي عليها بها مقدمه فقط بالكلام او عندك عندك باوربوينت سلايدز تبي تشاركي بيهم لا لا حنقول كلمتين بس عليها كلمتين باي ما فيش مشكله ان شاء الله تو نعطوك المايك في البدايه وان شاء الله ان الجميع يستفيد باذن الله تعالى لان أنا حس هذه من أهم من أهم الحملات يعني ديما نستخدم نقول لهم التسع نقاط بعد سنين الطب هذه كلها والتدريبات هذه كلها طلعت بتسع نقاط فالتسع التسع نقاط ديما نقول لهم فيها زيادة الوزن والرياضة والأكل الصحي والمشروبات الكحولية والدخان والمخدرات والضغط والسكر والدهون والفاميلي هيستوري نقول لهم رول أوف ناين هذه اللي حاطهم في في حياتي يعني ف... فان شاء الله لا ارتفاع ضغط الدم واحد من التسع النقاط هذه يعني. اكيد منصور تسمع فيها منصور؟ واضح واضح صوتك واضح جدا السلايدات واضحات جدا ما شاء الله تمام كل شيء ممتاز. الان جاهز من ناحيتك وباذن الله تمام. الامور هانيه باذن الله ما شاء الله تمام اشكر شكرا I'll mute myself tell you كيف حالك دكتور فتحي شنو اخبارك؟ كيف حال صحتك؟ مرحبتين كيف حالك دكتورة حواء؟ الله يبارك فيك إن شاء الله وأنت بخير صحة وسلامة أنا شكرا 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 على الاستشارة كنت امتياز آه سبحان الله <تصفيق> وأنت كنت سنة ثالثة تقريبا هيك لكن كنت تعطي فينا يعني حتى في الامتياز كنت تاخذ في الطلبة وتشرح لهم وصراحة أنا من آه. الناس اللي كنت فخورة أن واحد ما شاء الله يعني هو مشهور لكن بارك. يعطي لغيره بارك الله فيك من كرمك إن شاء الله والله يجزاك الله كل خير إن شاء الله بارك الله فيك دكتور حوا جزاك الله خير. ديما نذكروا فيك بالخير يعني نقول كيف انسان يعني طاولته ما تفضش كانت في المكتبه في الدور الثاني نتفكر فيها يعني ما تفضش آه من الطلبه ما في من يتردد ويسال ومن يتشرح له وهيك فكانت حاجه كويسه آه صراحه. بارك الله فيك والله من كرمك ومن ذوقك والله كلها يعني ان شاء الله ربنا يجعلها خالص بالخير. تستاهل كل خير صراحه. بوركت يا دكتور حوا بارك الله فيك جزاك الله كل خير والله اي يضرب ما شاء الله هاي هذا قبل حتى من المحاضره تبدا ما اشوف بعد بعد المحاضره كيف 
بس انا الفكره كانت ان هذا الدكتور يقرا حتى في حسب انا نعرف انه في القانون يعني كان يقرا طب وقانون مضبوط دكتور فتحي والله الله يا دكتور انت خلاص انت انت قلبتي لي الملفات كل اللي قدمها نحن ربي قرابه لو بس يعني خليها بعدين بارك الله عيد دربي انا اهل خوال زوجتي زوجتي نعيمه بشكلي خوالها عيد دربي طبعا نعرفهم كويس عيد دربي دكتوره وجيها واللي في طرابلس يعني مضمون في طرابلس وفي شويه في دارنا يعني طبعا يعني شيء ذلك كل شيء جزاك الله كل خير يا دكتوره حاولت ان نتواصل ان شاء الله بعد ان شاء الله وانت طيب حاضر باذن الله شكرا جزيلا نستنوا في الدكتور خالد بوزقيه انا اتصلت بيه قبل شويه قال لي ممكن دقائق وي وجوينت فاحنا ممكن نستنوا خمس دقائق وبعدين نعطوا الدكتوره حوا تقدم بالحمله الوطنيه وبعدين مش حضرتنا ان شاء الله يا دكتور خالد نحن يعني توصل على هذا ليش يعني توقف قد النور ممكن الناس تصلي بس باين نعطوا فرصه يا نعطوا فرصه يعني ما عنديش مانع ما دام الاكسبرت بانل ما عندهمش مانع ناخروا حتى 10 دقائق ان شاء الله مثلا نبدا و10 نعطي دكتورة حوا ممكن ثلاثة لخمس دقائق ف... وإن شاء الله بعدين نبدو يعني بالنسبة لي يعني وقت اللي لي بين كارل سايتي الصراحة إن المشروع هذا والأشياء هذه اللي تندار الصراحة it's worth it all the time يعني فخلي نشوفه عندنا دكتور خالد إن دكتور خالد إن شاء الله حنحطك كمودريتر الآن ككو هوست حط... أنت موجود ككو هوست وعندنا دكتور أسامة بهيليل الهيد في ليبيان كارد سوسايتي المدير العام زي ما نقول إحنا دكتور خالد السلام عليكم السلام ورحمه الله تسمع فيا منصور واضح جدا دكتور خالد صوتك واضح ما شاء الله جدا بقى تمام ممتاز جدا قبل شويه قلت انا راهو اليوم عندنا ثلاثي خطير خاشين ثلاثه هجوم ما شاء الله في الاي بي دكتور فتحي دكتور يوسف دكتور خالد وقلت لهم تو في الهارد فيلر عندنا ثلاثي لكن في الـ في الاي بي عندنا سداسي ممكن في ثلاثه ظاهرين وممكن حتى اكثر من سداسي كان يعني مش ناسي حد واحد اثنين ثلاثه اربعه سباعي ما شاء الله لا احنا خاشين بقوه اتساع يا منصور صعب. مش هجوم صعب اتساع عندي صديقي يعمل في الالكتروفيسيولوجي فيلوشيب في يونيفرستي اوف انديانا من السعوديه فيقول لي احنا ميزتنا الاي بي لو بنجو نحكم على الجنرال كارديولوجيست نخشوا له في الاي بي مابنج والاشياء هذه قال لما نديروا الريكومنديشن نتاعنا نحطوها نقول له ديروا دير قال ما يناقشوش فينا ليش؟ لان مش عارف احنا ايش نديروا فقال اللي نقولوا فيها يديرها وخلاص يقول يا سيدي انا تحت امرك حط هذه دير هذه نقص وزيد <تصفيق> نسمع الكلام وخلاص يعني صح فقال نديروا في حاجات مش كل واحد يفهم فيهم يعني ما شاء الله نحس مرحبا خالد مرحبا خالد خير يا فتحي شو حالك يا فتحي؟ كيف حالك؟ شو اخبارك؟ لك وحشه والله لك وحشه والله الله يسعدك طمنا عليك ما شاء الله اخبارك طيبه باك الله فيك والله الحمد لله ضروري ما انت لاقوا اكيد انا انتقلت بعد مسج في الجروب وان شاء الله خلاص ان شاء الله تو الويكند هذا اول نحصل باك غدوه تلاقوا كمان فتحي كان في فرصه اوكي راح خالد سليك يفاير يورا والي طردك لا اسمع خالد سليك يا فتحي قصدي ممنون مني واجد الايام هذين تو يحكي لك هو غدوه تو يزيد يحكي ما هي كويس كويس لك ما هي كويس ما انا وضعك كويس لا في الرضاعة مع خالد سليك في الرضاعة تمام هذا هذه جود نيوز انا ان شاء الله احنا جزء من التجهيز نبوا حد يعمل ريكوردينج لل للسيشن فاني حاعمل ريكوردينج بس جاست از ا باك اب الاثنين يعمل ريكوردينج فمش عارف من هو اللي ممكن اللابتوب يسمح له انه يعمل ريكوردينج فحيساعدنا جاست ان كيس خالد بوشكي تقدر تدير ريكوردينج انا مش معي اللابتوب والله عادي ما فيش مشكله ريكوردينج لحظه بس خليني راجع الزوم لي فتره ما درت ريكورد شني شي الخطوات يا منصور يلا هاي تو تشوف انت في الرايت لور كورنر تلقى حاجه 
مور انا نحن بس نشوف ايش في وحده في زوم اللي هي الريكورد اللي احدى البول والبريك رومز بريك اوت في وحده اسمها ريكورد ريكورد اللي هي شو تشات ريفيو وتحت منها ريكورد ف هنبدو ريكورد احنا ممكن في خمس دقائق فتضغط عليها تبدا ريكورد ريكورد خلاص باي تمام بس يعني باك اب معناه انت منصور تدير وين الريكورد حتى بالضبط اي بالضبط احنا الاثنين نبدو مع بعض جاست ان كيس الكمبيوتر انترنت تنقطع لي واحد منا ف الكمبيوتر مرات يضل فل الهارد ديسك درايف بتاعها تبدا الريكورد وبعد تديرها سيف اتس لايك 500 ميجا فمرات تلقاش سبيس جاست ان كيس تحسب لاي طارئ فتكون عندنا بلان بي اي وبي يعني تمام انت في ولايه يا منصور؟ انا قاعد في ما شاء الله في وايومنج بين مونتانا وكولورادو لا انتم ما شاء الله الواي فاي بتاعكم اكيد افضل من ويست فيرجينيا <تصفيق> والله الحمد لله سو فار على الاقل الميزه ان الواي فاي الوحيد اللي نستخدم فيه كانوا معي اثنين شباب اطباء بيقدموا على الريزدنسي تو كيف طلعوا من ساعه قعدوا معي اسبوع هنا في العياده وفي البيت فوصلنا اسبوع اسبوع كامل امس درت در 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 لهم بنزين بالقمح فما توقعوش لما كنت بنعصد البنزين قلت لهم بنديروا تصويت يلا ديمقراطيه تبوا بنزين والله مكرونه الطبيخه طايبه تبوا بنزين والله مكرونه وانا شاد ال ال القمح في يدي بندي نحط ال... بنحط البنزين قالوا لي ليش نصوتوا وانت شاد الوحده قلت لهم غير نبي نسمع صوتكم هم الاثنين قالوا مكرونه قلت لهم لا بنديروا بنزين قلت لهم القرار بيدينا شيء قلت لهم ما فيش تصويت غير نبي نسمع صوتكم بس يعني فدرنا لهم بنزين انبهر والله الحمد لله جت لمه كويسه و... واستانسنا آه. فيهم فكانوا ممتازين هم الاثنين ما شاء الله والله آه. من بير بيهم الصراحه فيري 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 جود الصراحه فيري بروفيشنال وعملوا فيري جود والله ف... فان شاء الله هيك ممكن اربع دقائق ونبدو بعد اذن الجميع يعني لو ما حد ما فيش حد عنده اعتراض ايمن موجود معنا ايمن تفضل ايمن السلام عليكم منصور شباب كلهم دكتور خالد دكتور استاذ دكتور يوسف كل المجموعه اخوي منصور كيف الحال؟ تمام تمام بارك الله فيك الله ايمن في الاخبار الحمد لله ست الامور كويسه مرحبا ايمن اهلين تر فتحي كيف حالك شنو اخبارك متسوقين للمحاضره اي دونت نو تسوق سواج مجرد لا لا كلها كلها فور يو سكيلز لا كلها بيسك بيسك ثينكس بالنسبه للريجست بالنسبه للريكوردينج يا يا منصور وايمن في السيرنج بتاع بتاع الزوم يو كان دو ات تو جو للكلاود So you don't need to worry about your battery or today now. Okay, when your record has nothing to do with your. حتى لو كانت مثلاً طلعت من meeting, recording is still going. فديرة this way, I think it would be better, safer, and I could ديرة the the hard disk of your computer of your. The setting of the online, the نسبة لل للزوم, you can choose it the hard drive. درنا في الأول دكتور. أول مفتاحنا درنا المشكلة في space. فاضطرينا تقعد تمسح تمسح لكن على الاقل كباك اب بعدين حد ينزلهم في جهاز معين قصدي صح صح اوتوماتيكلي لكن جربناها في الاول يعطيك الزوم الاكونت هذا اذا تقول ليميتد سبيس لما الاكونت بتاعك شود كفر اتليست فيو جيجا بايت ويتش وود بي انف بس بعد الميتنج على طول واحد ينزله على طول على الديفايس ايوه هي يعطوك شهر يعني هو اذا تقول ما يخليه مع الكلاود ايه لا هو يقعد يقعد هو غير لما يقعد ورا بعض هو يعني انا فهم yeah. قصدك خليه اوتوماتيكلي يركب yeah. على الكلاود بعدين انت اللي راحتك تنزلها في مكان باك اب صح؟ هيك قصدك بالضبط يا وذا ان مانث وذا ان مانث بعدها تقدر تدير ديليت هم يعطوك شهر شهر تقريبا بالزوم خلاص هذه ثينك وي كان دو ات فكره كويسه شكرا مش عارف دكتور منصور بخصوص بتاع الحمله الوطنيه ال دكتور حوا حكينا قبل شويه قبل ساعه وموجودة معنا ان شاء الله فانا اعطوها الانيشال ستارت فقالت كيف ادنى المغرب هم من 8 دقائق الان فانا اعطوا فرصه للناس لصلاه المغرب قلنا نبدو ممكن ان 1 مينت قلنا بنؤخروها 10 دقائق فقط وبعدين نبدو تعرف الدكتور حوا والدكتور فتحي الريس بعدين والاي بي كلات الاي بي ان شاء الله انلايتس يعني ان شاء الله
وطبعا في حتى الاعلان الثاني لمؤتمر الجمعيه ان شاء الله حيكون في مدينه بنغازي نهايه السنه من يوم 29 ل 31 ديسمبر ان شاء الله الاعلان حطيناه على موقع الجمعيه والفيسبوك ومجموعه الفايبر وان شاء الله التسجيل حيبدا في الاول من جون ان شاء الله فيعني راح حبيت نحط في الصوره وكل كل مره حنديروا ابديت يعني موضوع الابستراكت سبمشن والورك شوب طبعا اعضاء الجمعيه مهم جدا يشدوا القضيه شكرا حبيت غير نوه على المؤتمر ممكن انت اخوي ايمن لو بعدين وقتك يسمح ولو حابب تكون في نهايه المحاضره تعطي ممكن او دكتور حو في البدايه وانت في النهايه تقدر تعطي 1 اور 2 minutes على على اللقاء لو حابب او نحط له فلاير في حد عنده اسئله في النهايه ما فيش مشكله بالعكس ما دبينا ممكن تو دكتور خالد بوزقيه تبدا بدايه الريكوردينج وحنبدا ان شاء الله الان لان هذا الوقت المناسب. ابدا ابدا نسمح فيه تطلع لي بدايه ريكوردينج حتى يعني انا بديت الريكوردينج بس مش عارف خالد خالد بادي حتى خالد بادي خلاص كلام على بركه الله معناته طالع ريكورد خلاص نبدو نبدو نتوكل على الله في الـ في السيشن لو ايفري ون اجريز نتوكل على الله يعني Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to another Libyan Cardiac Society session, Arrhythmias for Clinician Tips and Tricks. Our speaker today, Dr. Fatih Idris, from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, interventional cardiologist and electrophysiologist. On the expert panel, uh, we have two electrophysiologists, Dr. Yusuf Adarat from Kentucky and Dr. Khaled Buzgaya from Marshall University, uh, West Virginia. Before we start our session, we have Dr. Howard Derby, consultant family physician. Dr. Hawa is the head of Libyan Cardiac Society Hypertension Working Group. حتعطينا ان شاء الله مقدمة بخصوص الحملة الوطنية لارتفاع ضغط الدم قبل بداية المحاضرة. دكتور حوا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ان شاء الله الجميع بخير. ان شاء الله مع المركز الوطني جمعية القلب Working Group of Hypertension بنديروا حملة وطنية لمكافحة مرض ارتفاع ضغط الدم. عن طريق حملة توعوية ويقيم وبنديروا مسح طبي معها اللي هو هايبرتنشن سكرين كل الهدف إننا بنرفع مستوى التوعية بالوقاية والتشخيص والعلاج ونحفز الأفراد على قياس ضغط الدم ومعرفة مستوى السكر والدهون مع ومعدل الاختطار الوزن ونحسب البادي ماس اندكس المستهدفين طبعا جميع البالغين يعني أي حد فوق 18 سنة يقدر معناها انكسولة ضغطة المكان كل المدن من ليبيا مستهدفة الحملة إن شاء الله حتنقسم إلى حملة إعلامية كلها فيها توعية يعني عن طريق سواء صفحات التواصل الاجتماعي عن طريق الإذاعات حتنطلق الحملة إن شاء الله يوم 14-5 وبالنسبة للمسح حيكون يوم 17-5 إلى 17-6 يعني حيمتد إلى شهر كامل اي شخص يعني من من مجموعات اللي عنده رغبه انه يشترك في الحمله يقدر يتواصل معنا ان شاء الله المركز الوطني حيوفر الاجهزه نتاع الضغط ويعني حتكون الكترونيه اجهزه قياس السكر والباقي الاجهزه اللي هي اللي مطلوبه التفاصيل ان شاء الله في بكره اجتماع على الزوم نفس الشيء حن يعني نقولوا التفاصيل بالنسبه للمجموعات وين يقدروا يقيسوا الضغط كل مجموعة إنها كيف تكون مجموعة وين هي ترغب إن تقوم بالحملة نتاعها نتمنى يعني من جميع المشاركة هذا عمل وطني والوقاية طبعا لها دور أساسي في منع الأمراض أمراض القلب بالخصوص والهايبرتنشن بصفة بصفة عامة والهايبرتنشن بصفة خاصة شكرا لكم وإن شاء الله بالتوفيق شكرا دكتورة حوا أتفق معك تماما كيف ما نعرف احنا من صغر أن الوقاية خير من العلاج فهذه من أهم المشاريع اللي تقدموها للدولة الليبية خاصة والله أي مشروع يتقدم في حول العالم يعني هي البرايمري بريفنشن فالآن نبدو في محاضرتنا دكتور فتحي The stage is yours now شكرا منصور شكرا دكتورة حوا شكرا أيمن وباقي الزملاء في المجموعة القلب الليبية على إتاحة الفرصة Who, uh, to to present for for this uh, general rounds. So uh, I have no uh, interest 
I, I have no conflict of uh, interest to go back to this presentation. Let me see if my uh, one second. And um, so uh, the whole thing about this presentation is is not to, we're not gonna go through detailed EKG. The whole uh, the, uh, purpose of this presentation is to give the general clinician who are not specifically arrhythmia trained some tools, some things to use uh, to help reach the diagnosis, uh, especially in complex rhythm situations. So I'm not, not gonna give you um, like uh, specific uh, details, but we're gonna go with general concepts. So, so there are three basic concepts. I find them very useful when you look at rhythm diagnosis. First one, a rhythm diagnosis is quanti uh, quantitative, not qualitative. In other words, the arrhythmia either exists or do not exist. There is nothing called mild atrial fibrillation or some VT. You can say patient is mildly anemic, maybe, my, my, but you cannot say uh, AF is patient has mild AF or moderate AF or some VT. So it's completely uh, quantitative. It exists or do not exist. So that's a very important concept for rhythm diagnosis. Second thing, uh, rhythm diagnosis precision is so crucial. And to be precise in getting your uh, diagnosis, uh, you have to delineate P wave versus Kers complex. And this is probably the, the core uh, idea is try always to find where is the P wave, where is the Kers complex, and what's the relationship between them. So that's a very important second concept. Thirdly, uh, when you do the 12 lead EKG or rhythm strip, this, they have their own limitations. So sometimes, even with a good tracing EKG, the diagnosis is still not clear. Even in the best hands, even in the most expert, um, uh, most expert arrhythmia specialist. So in which case you need to do something else. You need to uh, do sometimes maneuvers uh, to delineate what's an underlying rhythm. Sometimes you need to give drug. And sometimes it's impossible until you have intracardiac tracings. Like either you take the patient to the EP lab or or you do a pacemaker interrogation. And we're gonna go over these concepts throughout the rest of the presentation. So these are the three main concepts we're gonna go through. Um, so, so we're gonna start by a case. Uh, and then uh, for this one, I, I wanna um, get the input or the opinion of the audience about this, and then we will revise this case later on. So this is a 43 year old female. She had history of ischemic cardiomyopathy. She had an ICD implanted. So she presented with a shock by her device. So they did a device interrogation. I know this is a, a little bit complex, but I'll explain to you. This is a tracings from her ICD and uh, the tracings show VF, VF, et cetera. Uh, so this is a tracing. So this is the rhythm, the patient's rhythm. What you, the arrows you see here are the markers. So the device tried to label each beat it sees. You see sometimes the device missed some beat. So this beat was not seen by the device, but this beat. Do you guys see my uh, my arrow, Mansour? Yeah, very, very clear, uh, Dr. Fatih, very, yes. Okay, good, good. So, so you see the device sometimes misses some of those beats. This beat is completely uh, missed. Sorry, that's gonna go bad for some reason. I keep clicking. Um, so, so the question in this case, is this patient uh, in the sinus rhythm? Yes. No, maybe. So is this patient in sinus rhythm? Mansoor, I don't know whether we have polls or we just go uh, by... Uh, I thought, I thought by. about the polls, honestly, earlier. But okay, yeah, good. So time. maybe in the chat, right, we'll That's take correct. time, exactly. So maybe in the chat, everybody enter one, two, or three. Uh, yes, uh, one, if you think this patient is in sinus rhythm, put one. If you think the patient is not in sinus rhythm, put two. If it may be, put three. So, yeah. Yeah, so Can we I see give some give them a hint. This question is tricky. Just let you know, give you a hint. <laughs> Trying to help. Uh, okay, no. Okay, no, we, we don't need to, to go to, to uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, I want to, we want to get the input about this. So I think few twos, there's uh, maybe a couple of people think the patient is in sinus rhythm. Okay, we'll come to this case later on. So let's go with the tip number one. Always think about A and V, okay? Think atrium and ventricle. Most of the time, the atrium drives the ventricle. So A precedes B. That's what the common rhythm, normal sinus rhythm. In atrial fibrillation, atrium 
typically drive the ventricle and SVT. So uh, there are situations where A drives the V. There is other rare situations where the ventricle drives the atrium. Believe it or not, the ventricle can get control of the atrium if the patient has ventricular tachycardia. So some ventricular tachycardia, the situation is re reversed. So the ventricle drives the atrium and take control of the atrium. Not common, but, but possible. Okay, so that's the second scenario. Or the atrium and the ventricle can be completely interrelated. Uh, for example, in patient with complete heart block, this is a common, famous AV dissociation. And in some ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, uh, you uh, patient may have uh, uh, no VA relationship. And then you may ask me, okay, how come we have VT here and here? Well, in ventricular tachycardia, it depends on the status of the AV node and the hypochondry system and the whole conductive system. Uh, the ventricle may be successful in transmitting back the electricity and capture the atrium, in which case V drives the A, but if the VA conduction gets interrupted by anything, and then you probably end up in the, in the VT situations. And the reason to think about this, uh, if you see uh, AV dissociation, usually the diagnosis is quite simple on 12 VD EKG because you will be able to discern, you'll be able to see where are the P waves and hence you can tell where is the tachycardia. But if the patient's ventricle captures the HM all the time, all these P wave will be hidden and maybe impossible to see them. So, so think about this concept. So normally HM drives ventricle, but rarely ventricle may drive the HM in certain VTs or the A and HM and ventricle are dissociated, okay? So uh, let's go to, so, this is a, we're gonna go over a basic simple, what we call intracardiac electrogram. And cause this will help simplify the, uh, the concepts we're gonna talk about. For people trained in rhythm, electrophysiologists and, and people dealing with pacemaker, this is a, a common tracings. So we have two channels. The channel at the top is in the atrium. The channel at the bottom is in the ventricle. The paper speed is the same paper speed as the EKG. So it's 25 pa paper speed every, Small complex is about 4 milliseconds, and every, every large complex is 200 milliseconds. Uh, what you see here, what we call near field, uh, the near field electrogram, it's narrow. It's not like your surface EKG. This is all you see is a sharp inflection like this, very sharp inflection. You see it in the atrium, and, and here you see it in the ventricle. So try not to read this as a EKG, like surface EKG, like don't see, well, this is ST elevation. No, this is not an ST elevation. Mm -hmm. So this is a, what we call near field electrocardiogram. And the idea of this is only timing, okay? So the idea of these tracings is not to give you uh, any uh, uh, bundle branch block or whatever. It's mainly to show you the timing. And the timing actually for this tracing is goes from left to right. So, so here, if you look at the timing here, the atrium, event happened, and then after that, the ventricle event happened. And after this atrium event, second ventricular event happened. And you can, uh, so you can, you can tell here um, that the atrium is driving the ventricle. So the A precedes the V, there's A before each V. So this is a beautiful normal sinus rhythm taken from a patient's pacemaker, okay? So this is pacemaker, the atrial lead shows the patient has its own rhythm and the ventricle follow that. So this is what we call atrial driving the ventricle. Okay, so that's a normal. So we're gonna use this example to understand some of the, those arrhythmia tracings, okay? Um, next, so this is uh, a 90 year old female. Uh, she's in the hospital uh, and she present the, the, on the telemetry, she had this uh, run of white complex tachycardia. Um, as you can see here, there's three channels, channel one, channel two, channel three. And she had a kind of sinus beat. And then, sorry, I just need to, for some reason my uh, uh, marker keep running. So the sinus beat and this curious complex is relatively narrow. So second sinus beat. And then there is PR to run slightly long. And then after that, you see a run of white complex tachycardia. The machine called it ventricular run, means ventricular tachycardia and label it as ventricular tachycardia, as you can see. Uh, um, and um, 
three uh, square like uh, black uh, boxes here. So this was labeled as ventricular tachycardia by the machine and looks wide and ugly. And then later on, you can see the patient has another beat at the bottom here of the same thing. And if uh, wide curves complex, that's fast, faster than the normal rhythm. So it's wide and tachycardia. So wide, wide complex tachycardia. Is this ventricular tachycardia? Well, if you need to, you need to get some more information. So if you zoom on this uh, run of tachycardia, and if you look carefully, you can see some little P waves preceding each Keras complex. So there is a P, which was not existing in this T wave here. After this beat, there is a P led to this Keras complex, another P, and there's a clear P wave preceding each of these Keras complexes. And this is very suggestive that what we see here is a run of atrial tachycardia because started in the atrium somewhere. Uh, and that was associated with some ventricular conduction delay or aberration or whatever it is. So in this case, A drives the B. It's not the other way around. Well, rarely you can have atrial tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia start at the same rate, but that's gonna be impossible, right? It's too much of a chance that the atrium uh, tachycardia and ventricular tachycardia starts at the same rate all of a sudden. So this is almost diagnostic that what, whatever the machine calls it ventricular tachycardia is nothing but just an atrial tachycardia because we apply the simple rule. Do we see a P wave? We did, so let me just go back for some reason. Sorry about that. The, for some reason, uh, my mouse keep uh, moving to the next slide. So for so if there's a P wave preceding each Keras complex or so A drives the V and it's very consistent. So you see it here. Okay, so this is a, uh, a case where you can 100% say, well, this is an atrial tachycardia. I don't care how wide the square is complex. This is not ventricular tachycardia. Just applying the same rule, who drives who? A drives V, not B drives A, okay? So, uh, so there's the intracardiac tracing. So this is, when we go back to those tracing, you see the A before the V. So, so this patient has a sinus rhythm, A before V. A before V, so this is two sinus beats, okay? And then the next sinus beat should be somewhere there, but the next sinus beat, the next beat came early. So that A and drive V, A drives V, and every A was followed by V until the tachycardia terminated here. And then after that sinus rhythm came back again. So what we uh, what we see in here, this is exactly the, the rhythm is I showed you earlier, the wide complex tachycardia labeled as VT. But when you apply the intracardiac concept or intracardiac tracing, you can tell this is exactly what you see. You see a run of atrial tachycardia, not ventricular tachycardia. Let me take this case now. This is another patient, and this is the intracardiac EGM. Okay, so what's the diagnosis here? You have, I want you to write either one of them, VT or AT, just type in the uh, chat box, either AT or VT, just two letters. Okay, well, for some reason moving. Uh, can you, uh, can people type in the chat box, AT, okay, yeah, somebody type AT, um, V, A, V, T, A, T, okay. So for AT, the HM has to drive the ventricle. This is the AT. So the AT, what you see, the HM starts and the ventricular follow. The HL starts and ventricular follow. And when the HM finish, no ventricular follow. So if this is a VT, if this is a, a VT, some other beat would be here. So this is the past one was AT. Now the one I showed you after, this is the one in question. What you see here, sinus rhythm, sinus rhythm, A drives V, A drives V, a drives V until this point. But from this point, what we see, the earliest beat is in the ventricle. Remember, the bottom one is the ventricle. So the ventricle started and then was faster than the atrium. So we have many ventricular beats, but the atrium was going uninterrupted. You see the atrium is simply maybe slowed down a little bit, but the atrium going at its own rate. So what we see here, we see VA dissociation. So the ventricle goes fast, 
and uh, the ventricle goes fast, faster than the atrium, independent than the atrium. Uh, so we have a run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a run of eight beats of ventricular tachycardia. While the atrium was going nicely in sinus rhythm, doesn't care about what happened in the ventricle. And then after the ventricular tachycardia decided to stop, the atrium took over again. Now the atrium drive the ventricle, the atrium drive the ventricle, and the atrium drive the ventricle, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is a, a nice example shows where there's V8 association. So sinus rhythm continuing on the top channel uninterrupted. The ventricle has a run of ventricular tachycardia for eight beats, and then the ventricle tachycardia stopped and the sinus node took over again, okay? Uh, I, I know this is probably a little bit different concept from what we do, do at 12 with EKG, but these uh, important concepts, if you try to entertain them, it will help you understand what you see on the surface EKG um, in, in uh, day in and day out cases. So, so the tip number two then what you do, uh, I want you to search for the P waves, search carefully for the P waves. And here's where areas you can search for the P wave. The P wave can be hidden in the QRS complex, in which case you cannot see it. The P wave can be hidden in the SD segment or on the T wave. So search carefully for the P, P wave. You, I, ref, I recommend that you look at these two leads very carefully, lead two and lead V1. I love lead V1. V1 is probably a, a treasure box. It has a lot of information. And uh, sometimes the P wave cannot be seen only if you use lead V1. So you have to be careful to look at uh, lead V1. Sometimes you cannot find the P wave until you do a pacemaker interrogation, like in the last two cases I showed you. You do a pacemaker interrogation when the patient has the arrhythmia and it tell you exactly where is the P and where is the V, and then you can tell what's the exact diagnosis. This is VT or AFib or whatever it is, but uh, that sometimes you need to do that. And rarely you do something called a sophageal lead. It's an old technique, but still sometimes uh, can be used. So we're gonna go over these little bit uh, tips here in the next few cases. So this is a 72 year old female, uh, and this is her EKG on telemetry, okay? So this is, we see about six beats uh, of uh, about eight or nine beats of, of rhythm. Looks like probably in the 100, almost 100 beats per minute or close to 100 beats per minute. So what's this rhythm, right? Uh, do we see any P waves? I'm not sure. If I would look at this alone, I would say this patient may be in junctional rhythm, okay? Because uh, there's narrow curious complex, right? There's nice, beautiful T wave. And I don't see any clear P waves here. I don't see any clear P waves here, right? So if I look at this rhythm alone, or, or these eight beats alone, I would say maybe the patient is in uh, junctional rhythm because narrow curious complex, so it's not wide, it's not ventricular rhythm. So it's, but there's no P wave. So we let simply call it junctional rhythm, right? Um, but again, the, the, remember the concept of searching for the P wave. So if, if you do more looking, if you go back a few beats here, if you look more, more and look at the T wave change, so look at the, just the T wave morphology, how it's changed, the T wave start having something here, something more prominent here. You see it there, you see it there. So that's your P wave. So this patient in fact is, has a sinus rhythm or sinus tachycardia, whatever you call it, but the patient has a, a long PR interval for whatever reason. The patient has first degree conduction delay. And when you get faster, the PR interval cannot be squeezed. This patient's disease in the AV node or whatever make him cannot uh, squeeze or shorten the PR interval. What happened? The P wave has no space to go except backwards. It goes, climbs slightly, slightly, slightly until it starts to be hidden on the T wave. So for example, maybe in this beat here, you see the T wave to the P is a good space here. You can tell this is T, this is P, right? And then when it gets faster, patient gets faster, the, the T, the P wave start going back and the distance between the TP segments starts shorter and shorter until here. And then now the, the P wave is completely hidden in the T wave. And you can tell the P wave here, the T wave here is much spikier, it's very spiky compare the T wave here, right? So pay attention to the T wave. T wave morphology change, it may tell you that there's some atrial activity hidden there, okay? So this applies to the concept of search for the P wave carefully. 
The P wave can be hidden everywhere. It can be in the Keras complex, in which case may be impossible to see it. It can be hidden in the SD segment or on the T wave or here, that's a usual space where it should be, okay? Because there's no ventricular activity, no depolarization, no repolarization in this uh, T curious complex segment. So look look carefully for the for the P wave where it's hidden, okay? Let me go to the next slide. So this is a, a 79 year old male with history of coronary artery disease. سامحني في المقاطعة ممكن في الإيكي جي السابقة مش ناخدو ال ال opinion تاع ال expert panel تعليقهم لأن ممكن ما نقدروش نرجع backward at the end of the session for each EKG. مش عارف من موجود دكتور يوسف الدراط لو موجود معنا ممكن يعطينا tips and tricks finding the P wave and the morphology the T wave from your perspective, دكتور يوسف. السلام عليكم صافية واضح يس ناس مرحبا انت اعطتني اصعب تلامس في منصور اصعب تلامس السلام عليكم بارك الله فيك دكتور فتح على التبس ان تريكس بالنسبة لي الواحد هذه سلامتي ورا مسين يعني بوزرف تي ويفز في ال طبعا it's hard to tell which lead هذا لكن I assume it looks like lead 2 morphology wise uh, positive P wave uh, with gradual increase يعني في heart rate so it's most likely a sinus tachycardia في gradual pro- uh, prolongation في PR interview which is expected لأن ال AV node is decremental كل ما يزيد ال heart rate the PR interval بتزيد ف uh, if I look at this I would say this is the sinus tachycardia uh, with a gradual increase in the heart rate. I don't see the ending, how it ends. Uh, how it ends, yeah, and it could also give us a clue if it's truly sinus tachycardia versus the cardiac, and that's the second differential diagnosis. Um, but uh, P wave, one to one relation, uh, most likely sinus tachycardia, uh, second differential diagnosis, is tachycardia. Uh, it's always good to uh, see how the arrhythmia starts, how it ends. Yeah. How in between, yeah, if there's any change in the A to B relation, always gives you a clue the arrhythmia. Yeah. But that's my input. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Shukran Yusuf. Yeah, exactly. And if you look here, I mean, you see the sinus beat. So this is maybe a, a PR interval. You see beautiful P wave here. So the PR interval. So the baseline of this patient has a long PR interval. But like you said, when it starts going faster, the TP interval gets uh, gets uh, shorter. Now you might argue this could be an atrial tachycardia. There's some difference, minor morphology in the and uh, P wave between this and this. It's hard to tell, but again, you need more than one lead. This lead here, if if you have only one lead, it gets harder, right? Because in this lead here, uh, you may not be able to tell where the P wave, but you see that different than the T wave morphology between this T wave maybe and this T wave. So there's minor subtle change in the T wave morphology. Uh, and if this patient uh, goes into tachycardia for long, and you have a curious, com- you have a 12 lead EKG only of this part here, maybe impossible to tell whether to, this is a junctional tachycardia, atrial tachycardia, or something. So the main concept is to just show the. Uh, here is just to show that the T wave, the P wave, whatever it is, is it ATAC, is it sinus, regardless, it can be hidden in the T waves. That's the purpose of showing this uh, tracing. If, if uh, I... The reason I uh, mentioned it, cardio, and the patients on telemetry, and in telemetry patients, they're in bed. Uh, why would someone have sinus like cardio sitting down? Just to broaden the special diagnosis, what always consider other possibilities. The atotachycardia has a phenomenon with that automatis, and a warming, warm up period, and cool down. So this is something to consider, yani, the differential diagnosis. That's why I mentioned atotachycardia as an additional possible diagnosis. Yeah, there's a Dr. Ayman who is going to be in this case. Dr. Ayman, your comment? Thank you, Dr. Mansour. I have a few questions. I want to listen to Dr. Fathi and Dr. Yusuf and Dr. Khaled. ال ال ان ال ال عاده في الساينس تاكيكارديا البي ار جيت شورتن في الحاله هذه زي ما شايف ان هي برولونج يعني جايه مور مع هذه ال اللونج ار بي تاكيكارديا لكن ويمكن هابات ان 
بالنسبه للتكيكارديا والويك باك ان اللي دزنت يعني فيتس وذ ساينس تكيكارديا لو شفت الفيرست بيت البي ار انترفال شورتر ذان ذا نيكست بيت وي ستارت جيتنج بروجريسفلي برولونجينج يعني البي ويف ستارت جيتنج هيدن وذ ذا تي ويف فعادة زي ما عارفين الساينس تكيكارديا يصير انهانس للكوندكشن اي بي نود والبي ار شورتن فمش عارف الدير انبوت على طبعا مهم تشوف الانست والاوف ست بتاع الاريتميا زي ما قال دكتور يوسف باش تدفرنشيت لان عادة الساينس تكيكارديا جراجوال والايت اتاك صدم انست اوف ست مع الورم اب والكول داون فيلم بس حبيت ناخذ الانبوت بتاعهم على نقطه البي ار فيري لونج تو مي فور ساينس تاك شكرا Right. Uh, do you want to tackle this use or I can answer? It's a point that you said, it's a point that you said. It's a good observation. It depends on the AV nodal properties. I mean, some patients have some AV nodal conduction disease, and they may not improve. I mean, when you have a sinus tachycardia, cardia, you expect the PR interval to shorten in relation to the In a very sympathetic, sympathetic input of AV node. Like in low patient is, uh, let's say, sudden onset of uh, an arrhythmia, uh, you can have PR prolongation yani, without any sympathetic uh, input in AV node. Uh, but that's why they have one of you consider an AV node. But it's not an absolute rule. Even yani, in the sun, it's like cardiac, the patient has some AV node disease. And PR interval, you can see the phenomena. You can see the phenomena. In the patient, for example, مقام صار زيادة في الساينس ساينس نود and they prolong prolong but then drop beat but then they regain that second beat it doesn't mean that this is atrial tachycardia it's sinus فهمتني فه depends or that depends on the AV node properties conduction properties on AV node for that particular patient I mean if it's a young patient you expect that the sinus tachycardia there's going to be an increase in heart rate with activity but that's that's my comment يعني ما أعرف أنت تبي في وين تسوي جامس Uh, exactly. I, I think it's the same thing. You can tell the patient has no healthy conduction to start with, or at least his PR interval at baseline is long. So, so the PR interval is long. Uh, a healthy conduction system, when there is acceleration in the, in the sinus rate, typically it's sympathetically driven. Typically it affects and enhances the sinus. Whatever enhances the sinus node activity also enhances the AV conduction. So that's why you see shortening PR interval when the PP interval gets faster. That's, that's why when people run, the PR interval gets shorter and the, and the, and the sinus node gets faster, right? They happen together. Uh, but if there's anything prohibits the uh, AV node from getting faster, the AV nodes, whatever conduction system is not healthy, is not intact, we don't know in this patient what it is. And then you have the sinus node gets faster, but the AV node does not respond. In fact, the PR interval here gets longer and longer. As you can see, the PR interval here is maybe longer here. And the P waves start hiding. Again, I mean, uh, the, the, the point to show here is that you, if, if you don't see P wave here, your differential diagnosis is completely different if you look at the P wave here. So here you can say maybe junctional tachycardia, whatever. If you have a 12, just you have a 12 beat EKG of one, two, three beats. Of these three beats, the whole thing. You, it's impossible to tell where is the P wave, right? But when you see the P wave, and, and, and then you can tell, okay, ITL, sinus, et cetera. And that's, that's you know, beyond the scope of this case. But uh, yeah, exactly. I, I like what, what you, you have said uh, for, for the uh, avionomic conduction. Yani, just, can, uh, we move to, can we move to the next case? Uh, so we, definitely. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I would add just, sorry, one sentence. I know it's too late getting, but just I have to add one point. I knew my traditional teaching in my fellowship, I was told that the T wave shouldn't be pointed like spiky T wave, like this one over here. It shouldn't be like a point, like pinpoint T waves. We call it tinted B wave or a spiky T wave. You always think about hidden uh, P atrial activity in the top of the T wave over there or pseudo R wave in lead V1 or pseudo S wave in lead 2. So I had a hint to find the P wave or compare it with the baseline EKG, pseudo S wave in lead 2, pseudo R wave in lead V1, and tinted or spiky or uh, pointed T wave. So I'm going to talk about the No, no, no problem. No problem. Thank you. So, so, so this is a 79 year old man with history of coronary artery disease, he presented with this white curse complex tachycardia, okay? So uh, this is, as you can see here, um, it's a white curse complex tachycardia, uh, very fast. I think the heart rate is what, 180 or so, very fast, white curse tachycardia. 
And in this case, if you try to, uh, the morphology is right, one branch block. And if you try to find, okay, where's the P wave? Try to search to look for the P wave. Maybe hard to, to con convince yourself there is specific P wave here and there. Let me just go back. Uh, okay, well, the, the, uh, the question is, is it VT or SVT with aberration or HR flutter? Or I cannot tell, need more, okay? So one, two, three, or four. Choose one of these, okay, as a reply to this. Uh, so VT number one as VT number two, flutter three. Uh, cannot tell, need more information number four, which is always an easy answer, right? So uh, this is the rhythm. So VT number one, SVT with right bar and block number two, flutter number three and need more information number four anybody you should need more information everybody com convinced that it's t okay okay good so uh i think people and you can here apply the morphological criteria whatever etc and or i think uh like Amen said, when, if somebody is old, somebody old with history of coronary artery disease, assume it's VT until proven otherwise, okay? So in this case, we, we, in fact, this patient has an ICD, okay? And this is the tracings from the tachycardia, from the ICD during the tachycardia. Same concept we used earlier. This is an atrial channel. This is a ventricular channel. And you can tell there's a lot of Vs. There's much more Vs. These, a lot of ventricular activities. And don't look at these, like I said earlier, don't look at them as wide or narrow curves complex because these are not uh, surface EKG. This is just a near, near field intracardiac electrogram. So there is a lot of ventricular activities compared to the atrial activity. So atrium is slower and ventricle is faster. So definitely there is tachycardia in the ventricle. So there is a ventricular tachycardia, 100%. Now, if we try to think about the VA relationship here, you can see for each two ventricular beat, there is one atrial beat. Ventricle, ventricle, one atrium. Ventricle, ventricle, one atrium. Ventricle, ventricle, one atrium. And that's this, ventricle, ventricle, one atrium. Ventricle, ventricle, one atrium. So what we have here, we have ventricular tachycardia conducts to the atrium, but here we have what we call VA block. So the ventricle block to the atrium here, but the ventricle drives the atrium here, the ventricle block to the atrium here, the ventricle drives uh, drives the atrium here. So this is a, a, a rare example where you have the ventricle, ventricle drives the atrium, but not for every beat, every other beat. So the ventricle conducted back to this one here most likely, and the ventricle did not conduct back to the atrium here. Ventricle conducted back, ventricle block, conduct, block, conduct, block, conduct, block, and it's very consistent. So this is no, not an AV dissociation, not a VA dissociation. This is a ventricle drives the atrium. So there is VA association, ventricle drives the atrium, but there is some block retrogradely. This is, uh, this is again, diagnostic ventricular tachycardia. When you see something like this, this is diagnostic ventricular tachycardia. And now if we go back to, uh, if we go back to look at the EKG of this, of this patient here, if you take part of the rhythm strip at the bottom, so you see that lead to rhythm strip, if you take it, if you zoom on it, and then now if you look at the T waves, you see there's something in this T wave here, but this T wave is completely smooth and flat. You see something in the T wave here, and this T wave is completely zoom and flat. And if you correlate them, what you see here is this is a retrograde P waves there. So V conducted, V blocked, V conducted, V block, V conducted, V block. So if you look carefully at the EKG sometimes, I know it's subtle hint, but again, you, you search for the P wave, look for very subtle changes in the T wave morphology, especially if, the, if, if this is seen only in one beat, not seen on the other, seen here, not seen on the other, it should tr trigger your thinking curiosity. Okay, well, there must be VA dissociation or VA association with retrograde block or something. And that's exactly correlate with the intracardiac electrogram. This is the same patient, but here is the patient at twice. Here is one tracing, and here is the patient, the same patient at different time. 
when you look at the T wave here, you see the T, you see here, there's something in the T wave here, different than this, this alternating, right? So you know this P wave hide nothing, and this P wave hide, uh, sorry, this T wave high hides nothing, and this T wave hides the P wave. Nothing, P wave, nothing, P wave. But if you look at the same tracing at the bottom here, you see there's P wave in each of these. So, so here there is retrograde uh, two to one conduction, while here the ventricle drives the atrium. So there's one to one VA conduction here. When it's one to one VA conduction, it's harder to detect it, harder to make the diagnosis sometimes. This is easier to make the diagnosis, but here you don't know whether this, what you see here is part of the T wave, this is the actual T wave, or there is a P wave, you have no clue. You cannot tell without having an intracardiac electrogram. So uh, in this patient, uh, let me just go back. And, and this patient uh, has a, uh, if you go a second, uh, the, uh, here you can look at the rhythm strip here. So the patient was in tachycardia, the ICD paced, the patient out of the tachycardia and terminated the tachycardia. So here's the termination of the tachycardia and the patient start having some paced beat after that. So VT with two to one VA conduction and then VT with one to one VA conduction, anti-tachycardia pacing by the ICD terminated and the patient in sinus rhythm. But again, the, the whole purpose of this is not the ICD itself. The whole purpose of this case is to show you that you need to look, look carefully for what the P wave can be look like. So uh, the, the scope of this case just beyond the ICD uh, uh, interrogation or something. Okay, and the uh, okay. So so the next case is this one here. So this is a 56 year old uh, male with history palpitation. So what's the diagnosis here? So we have few answers. Is it AF with RVR? or AV node or entry tachycardia, number two. And number three, AFib slash flutter, number four, cannot tell, need more information. So that's one here. Uh, whoever votes for AFib, just put number one. AV node or entry tachycardia, put number two. AFib slash flutter. I love that term. Some people use it, AFib flutter. Um, that's number three, or need more information, number four. So just type something in the chat box. One, two, three, or four. Okay. Looks like the... no answers. Okay, so we'll move on. So if you look at the tracings of this patient here, uh, with another EKG here, you can see there's clearly a P wave here, right? And if you go back, same thing, if you go back and track, look at those T wave changes here, if you look at this part here. So if you take this part and make it and make it big, and then you can tell that there is a the change in the morphology. So this this is this is a sinus beat, no question about it, right? But there's something here in the T wave, SD segment, there's something here that's most likely probably a P wave. And there's probably a P wave here, probably a P wave here, a P wave, and you can see the shape of the P wave, of the, of the, uh, the T wave changes. Here, this is the spiky P wave Mansour was talking about it, uh, which is the uh, spiky, very spiky. So most likely there's an, a P wave here started the whole thing. So if you look, if you look at these, all these are P wave. So what we have here, we have sinus beats, and then we have a run of most likely atrial tachycardia, sudden onset, most likely. So sinus tachycardia would conduct. So A drives V, A drives V, but you have slowly, the PR interval gets slowly longer, and the P wave now start falling back on the ascending limb of the T wave, and maybe even here as the PR interval gets longer for the winky back, so atrial tachycardia would winky back. The last beat was, the last P wave was this one here. This is blocked. This does not drive the ventricle. This is blocked right there. So you have a, a winky back. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, uh, uh, eight atrial beats with seven ventricular beats. So you have seven to eight atrial winky back for this run of atrial tachycardia. After the atrial tachycardia terminated here, 
sinus node started or sinus rhythm started again. So this is a much clearer example regarding the issue we have a discussion earlier about it. Same thing, like you search for the P wave carefully. This time it's hidden in this part of the, and there's a blocked P wave to the to the atrium. So this was not actually AFib. You need to look carefully all the, and the T wave and ST segment, like I said earlier. So this is the same patient. They give the patient some cardiazam in the drip, okay? So they give him an ICU, give him cardiazam. And now with the cardiazam, you can tell there is a, the PR interval gets longer. You see there's fluctuations and there's, there's, you see this P wave hidden there. There is P wave hidden there. There's P wave hidden there. Uh, there's P wave hidden there. And then what you do next is just to, to confirm the diagnosis, yes, you just do a crowded sinus massage. So you go and do CSM or you can give adenosine. And clearly after you did the adenosine, you see this P wave was hidden there, P wave here, P wave hidden there. And after you do carotid sinus massage, you confirm that the atrium is going in some sort of atrial tachycardia has nothing or flutter has nothing to do with ventricles. So, so this is uh, an example of uh, using more things to clarify the relationship between the atrium and the ventricle, crowded status massage, for example. Um, next uh, uh, case is uh, what was given to EF instead of uh, what to give patient low EF. Yeah, if you if you're if you're a good question. So if you're not sure, you can give adenosine to confirm. But carotid sinus massage, I, I still pr prefer that technique. It's simple. Unfortunately, it's maybe under taught, but uh, if you do it, uh, maybe another set setting, we can talk about how to do uh, proper carotid sinus massage. Uh, but uh, if somebody is low EF, you don't want to give a cardiogram, you can give a denison to delineate that. Uh, this is another case. This is a 75-year-old female. She had a history of pacemaker. She was having routine EKG in the office, and she had this EKG done. And the question is, what's the underlying, uh, what's the underlying rhythm, okay? So is this a answer one, paced rhythm? Number two, uh, sinus rhythm with bundle branch block? Number three, cannot tell, need more information. So you can use one of these uh, um, things. Uh, one, two, or three, okay? Sinus with bundle branch block or paced rhythm or cannot tell. So one, two, or three. Okay, we're gonna go back to the EKG. Um, just type either one, two, or three. So uh, one, yeah, paste rhythm. Yeah, clearly you see you see some pacemaker here, right? Some pacemaker spikes here. Um, and then sinus. Anybody? So so remember when we say paste rhythm, you're talking about the ventricle, right? But always the question is what's happening in the atrium. You need to ask what's happening in the atrium which is so important. So here you can you can tell there's some atrial activity if you look at lead two, right? Some atrial activity, but is this sinus? What's this? Is this a, a T wave or part of the U or whatever? So sometimes it's hard to, to determine, right? Well, this is sinus blood or whatever. And in these cases, you need to amplify things. So this EKG was done on a 12 millimeter uh, per millivolt uh, amplification. And you see this box here. So this is a box for 10. What you need to do, repeat the EKG with 20 millivolts. So you just go higher millivoltage. And sometimes that will clarify the diagnosis for you. So now the patient is not paced as much. So the patient is intermittently paced, but more important here, you can, you can see that the, vent the atrium is in a flutter, right? And uh, the way to do that is by uh, amplifying the baseline the EKG baseline. So instead of 10 millivolt, you do a 20 millivolt. Very simple thing you can do in the office. And when you know that the patient is in flutter, now the treatment will involve other things like does the patient need to be having, uh, to be put in anticoagulation, et cetera, et cetera. So being paced rhythm alone, that talks about the ventricle. So always think about the atrium. If you don't see the atrium clearly, do more techniques, either do crowded sinus massage, like we said in this case, or you can uh, do the double voltage EKG, okay? So these are, or adenosine. So these are a few maneuvers you can do to delineate what's the atrium, uh, what's the atrium is doing. Um, this is another patient, 76, history of coronary artery disease. He was seen in the ER 
for a routine, uh, I think a cold-like symptoms or whatever. And this is his EKG in the ER. His heart rate was 120 beats per minute, okay? And this was uh, his EKG in the ER. Uh, and the question is again, uh, what's, what's the rhythm, okay? So I'll give you a few examples, a few answers. So is this flutter with variable AV conduction, or this is intermittent Wolf Parkinson White or intermittent peak citation, or this is VT, or this is sinus rhythm with winky back, okay? So these are the four answers. Flutter, variable AV conduction, intermittent peak citation, VT, or sinus with winky back. We'll go back one look here, and we'll give about 20 seconds for people to point one, two, three, or four. One is, uh, sorry, one is a flutter with variable IV conduction, two intermittent pre excitation, three VT, four sinus with winky back. Okay. Two, three, Will Parkinson wide. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, flutter is number one. Okay. Flutter. Number two, intermittent wall for KCY. Number three, VT. Okay. And number four, sinus with winky bath. Okay. So, so uh, this is, although the patient is hemodynamically stable, this is ventricular tachycardia. Okay. And again, if you look and carefully search for P waves, you can tell that there's an atrial activity here. There's an atrial activity here. There's an atrial activity here. And then when you find some, like I said, lead V1 is a nice lead because it's a treasure box. There is a lot of, uh, it's the best way sometimes to look at, find the P waves. So if you find P waves here, go to the rhythm strip and try to search for any P waves hidden in the rhythm strip. And this is this is pretty much easy case because there you can see the P wave here, you can see here. So there must be a P wave in the middle. So take your caliber or take a piece of paper and try start to point the P wave here, P wave here. Okay, so the next one is gonna be here. And then if you take the same distance from here to here visually, the next one is gonna be here. Visually take the same distance. So this is gonna be a P wave. Visually take another distance, it's gonna be a P wave. But the curious complex now is narrow. So this means this is probably sinus beats. It's narrow curious complex. You look at here, the P wave, there's a P wave, short PR interval, and the beat is narrow. So this is probably what we call it a capture beat. Uh, if you go back, this is a P wave there. At the same distance, you take the same distance back. There's a P wave here, same distance back, P wave here. So the P wave is going at the rate of maybe 70, 80 beats per minute. You see the PP interval is fixed and is unrelated. But every now and then, the P wave captures the ventricle. If you look at the tachycardia, this is maybe full beat of tachycardia. Probably this is the VT. The VT is not affected by the curious complex. But every now and then you see a beat like this one here. It's not as narrow as the capture beat and is not as wide as the tachycardia beat. So this one is in the middle. So we call that fusion beat, okay? So this is a, you can have a better EKG than this for uh, what we call, uh, you can have AV dissociation or you can have fusion beats where the tachycardia fires and the sinus fires, and you can have a beat in between like this one here. So this patient has tachycardia like this wide. Every now and then you can have a fusion beat between the tachycardia and sinus beat, or every now and then you have a sinus beat. It's uh, completely uh, sinus beat. So everybody's familiar with this concept. So if you go back to the EKG of that patient, you can, you can tell that there's the red arrows. These are the sinus beats. They go in independent of the faster uh, curious complexes. And there's a, every now and then there's a change in the morphology of the curious complex by their capture beats or by fusion beats. So this is a uh, classical, very classical uh, ventricular tachycardia with all the AV dissociation criteria and features. Now the heart rate is not super fast. Ventricular tachycardia doesn't need to be too fast. The patient may be hemodynamically stable. In fact, this patient was just seen in the ER for other reason and related to the tachycardia. But again, you'd be surprised how many patients can walk with, with ventricular tachycardia. Again, apply the same thing. What the ventricle is doing, what the atrium is doing, and if there's any relationship between both of them. Um, so this is a capture beat. This is a fusion beat. Um, so, uh, and if you see this capture beat, fusion beat, or VA dissociation, et cetera, uh, 
uh, this can all be better mnemonic for ventricular tachycardia. Now, uh, another thing, this is a 76 year old male with coronary artery disease and history of palpitations. So this is the EKG. Uh, and then if you look at here, the patient has one, two, three, four, maybe eight rhythm or six uh, 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 leads. And the most attractive part of this EKG is here. You know, your eye leaves this and your eye gets jump on this and say, wow, there's something going on here, right? And uh, this here, you can tell, it looks like VT. I mean, uh, I think the question we have for this, this patient give normal sinus rhythm, do nothing, or IV give coumadin or uh, non-sustained ventricular tachycardia, get an echo or torsade de point and give the magnesium, right? And of course, okay, some people think give magnesium, torsade, okay. Okay, so if we go back, uh, okay, yeah, so beautiful. So, so we, we think it's torsade, you give magnesium, okay, so that's good thinking. We, we think it's torsade because what we think, we think we're looking at the morphology change, you get bigger, get smaller, but again, don't let this fool you. Whatever you see a noise like this, look for two things. Look for is any P wave hidden or QRS complex are hidden within other things. Now we have, if you look carefully here, there's a sharp, uh, beat here, a sharp beat here, and all other are just artifact. These are, uh, if, you, if, you take, uh, if you take the uh, rhythm uh, again, if you look at the blue lines, if you take a caliber and move, just take a piece of paper and pens, a pen and then go. So you see this sharp thing here, you see it here, this is exactly at the same timing between this and this, and the same here, and you see it there. All the other things you see, these are muscle artifacts from the small, because the EKG on the surface, chest wall, right? It picks up skeletal muscle. So, so this is, but the same, you see it more clear here. So actually some leads, you see it more easier. So the blunt uh, shape, these ones here, these are artifact, extra cardiac activity. These are all, could be a loose lead, could be muscle artifact, could be anything but the cardiac activity is still the same. It's unaffected, the timing is the same. And if you, uh, of course, I, I have hidden this lead here. This is a 12 lead EKG of the patient. I, I hide this intentionally because sometimes all you see in the hospital is one lead. Sometimes all you see this lead here. If you see the whole, all the three leads together, it's easy, right? Because you know, this is, if it's, if it's torsade here, why it's not torsade here, right? So, you know, there is issue with these two leads and that's why I give you the artifact here, but the, this is simultaneity. So the rhythm uninterrupted, this is clearly artifact. This is pretty common, very, very common. And uh, there's also uh, some publications about this. So I want you to be aware of this. The artifact can trick you. So the, the, the key thing is to look for more leads, more than just this or this, because it can be easier in some leads than the others. Here's no artifact, here's some artifact, here's more prominent artifact. So it's harder to detect the, the normal sinus rhythm here. And also look for the sharp spiky beats in the midst of this blunty beats, okay? So that's a pretty common rhythm we see it all the time. So be careful of artifact, okay? This is another case. This is a 54 year old female with multivessel disease. She had CAF positive for multivessel disease. And look at this. I think if a lot of people, if they look at this, they will get typically the ER, so they will call for your cardiology consult or something. But again, this is just an artifact. If you look carefully here, if you look, this is sinus, this is sinus. And then there's spiky thing here. That's a sinus. That's other sinus. The other sinus beat is here. Or, yeah, these are the keras complex. This is the other keras complex. This is this sharpie thing, keras complex. This is beautiful because you can see here the blunty and the Sharpie over it. This is the same thing. This is a Sharpie or the Blunty. All you need to do is just stick a, a piece of paper and mark here, mark here, and just move back words, and it, it will show you exactly where is every, every one of these. And I, again, another one here. So I'm sure uh, most of our cardiologists in the, in the audience, they, they will see this maybe at least once or twice a month, those, those artifacts. But you need to, to go before, go after, look at more leads, Think about the Sharpie stuff. Here's a nice Sharpie thing in the midst of a blunty stuff, okay? So that's a, that's an artifact. Um, let's go back afterwards. So uh, tip number four, look for artifacts and beware of and, and look for a different leads, like we say. Uh, we'll move on. This is a, 
ناخذ الاوبينيون مع دكتور خالد بوزقية مش يشارك معنا كذلك في الاكسبرت بانل اوكي دكتور خالد بتضيف اي اضافه بالنسبه للارتيفاكت تيبس اند تريكس اور اني كومنتس سو فار فروم وات واز جيفن ايرلير ان ذا ليكشر You know, you know, you know what, uh, Yusuf, yeah, yeah, Mansour, I would mm-hmm. love Khalz Buzgaya's input about this coming case here. Should okay, we? Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 if you want to go by the, uh, the artifact, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I case said, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, so this is a, uh, a, a 23 year old male presented with palpitations, and he has this uh, curious complex tachycardia, okay? So this patient is young and he have uh, what looks like fast tachycardia. When he presented the heart rate was close to 200. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, right bundle branch block. This is from many years ago, but I love this case because it's uh, very informative. So he, he, he came to the ER. I give people some, a minute here to look at the, uh, at the tachycardia. So this patient uh, has a tachycardia for four hours. He has palpitation for four years, on and off. He had flu-like symptoms three weeks earlier. In the ER, they gave him adenosine, six milligram, 12 milligrams, 12 milligrams, no effect. And then they put him on a cardiazam drip. On the cardiazam drip, the rate slowed a little bit, became a little slower. Like I think went from like 200, 190, 200 to 180, 170 beats per minute. But tachycardia did not terminate. The patient is very stable and he feels okay. All right, so, so this is the, uh, the clinical scenario for this case. You just go back to the uh, 12 lead EKG and uh, people, I want just people can just type in the chat box, uh, what do you think? SVT, VT, cannot tell. SVT, VT, or cannot tell, maybe one of the three. Uh, We'll start by SVT, VT cannot tell, just one, two, or three. Uh, we don't have a, uh, a question slide for this, but just go ahead, SVT, okay. VT or cannot tell, SVT. And looks like a, a beautiful typical right bundle morphology. Okay, so I've seen three SVTs. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. I want to people say cannot tell. Uh, it would be nice to get, uh, there's nothing wrong with answering cannot tell, but SVT, uh, I mean, and VT, these are the three things. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go back to this. So, so here, um, I don't know, Hal, do you want to come in now or, or you want to me go through the case and then you review the whole case afterwards? Khaled, are you there? Can you, can you hear me? Mansour, can you hear me? نسمع فيك ممتاز لا فعلا هو تريكي okay. كيس either in my opinion حتى تكون typical right bundle sometimes you have vesicular VT in young people uh, sometimes right. it's hard but anyhow we, will, uh, we would love to hear from you okay يعني سم حتى سم so, T wave and spiky I'm not sure how accurate it is but some of the T wave look at different morphology at the beginning at the end but let us see uh, let the case reveal okay sounds good okay so So this is a uh, neurocurious complex tachycardia, the differential again, SVT, VT, or uh, with aberration or, or, VT or, or vesicular tachycardia like, uh, like you elaborated. And then, uh, so uh, this patient was given adenosine, three doses, no effect, they put in a cardiazam drip. So here's what, what I recommend. So if you look uh, the case and look at the timer, so these are the rhythm strip taken from the patient, okay? And when you look at the rhythm strip from the patient is going very fast. Uh, this is lead two and this is lead V1 or equivalent. This is equivalent to lead two and this equivalent to lead V1. And every now and then, every now and then you see something like this. Every now and then you see something like this. Uh, you see something like this. You see something like this. So 
uh, whenever you see, you know, things like this, it should provoke uh, your thinking, okay, are we seeing some atrial activity? And if these are atrial activities, if this is a P wave, and this is a P wave, and then um, there may be a faster, uh, uh, there may be a faster, um, uh, there may be a faster ventricular uh, rates than the atrial rate, right? So if this is a P wave and this is a P wave, and this has to be ventricular tachycardia because, or likely to be ventricular tachycardia, right? So, so that's something you, you need to uh, think of. And then uh, later on, this is after the cardizem. Now the patient is on a cardizem drip, okay? So they gave him cardizem. Tachycardia is slower. This is only one lead. Remember, we don't have both leads now. The tachycardia is slower. But every now and then you see some sort of a P wave, something suspicious for a P wave hidden there, 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 there. So now you can see a lot of ventricular and a few atrial activities. So when you see something like this, it should provoke your thinking, okay, well, let me go basic. Is the atrium derived the ventricle, ventricle derived the atrium or no dissociation? Here, we clearly see an atrium and ventricle. They're not necessarily correlated to each other, right? And this should be simply make you think it could be ventricular tachycardia. So just what the, the, the teaching point here is, is this. In this one here, it's maybe impossible to tell. I cannot tell you it's SVT. I'm, just, I'm sorry for something. In this one here, it's impossible to tell. It's SVT or a fascicular VT, which is, you know, uh, unique tachycardia happening in younger people uh, where the patient have a right bone branch block morphology and left superior axis, which this patient has. Uh, and so this is, could be ventricular tachycardia, one of the rare ventricular tachycardias. But the question is, uh, is, this, um, uh, is this related to uh, that or this is supraventricular tachycardia? Hard to tell. So in this case alone, I think it makes you suspicious, but you need to do more search. So what we did in that case, we went to the telemetry rhythm strip. And I recommend everybody, a cardiologist, especially those who deal with the rhythm, they know this, but a general cardiologist, just go and look at rhythm strip, spend more time in the rhythm strip because you learn a lot, you find more information. And, and here you start to see the clues. The clues would be the, these little thing, you see them here and there. For example, this one, this one is more beautiful. Why this is seen here and not seen here? Clearly there's something going on here. And this is most likely, the heart has two major territory, atrium and ventricle. If the ventricle is this, this must be an atrium. Same thing happens here. This must be an atrium. We don't see it here. This beautiful, very clean uh, part of the ST reposition. So this must be a true atrial activity. This must be true atrial activity. And that should trigger your you know, curiosity to search more and do more. So this is like shortly after they gave the, the cardizem. And after they gave the cardizem, the tachycardia slowed a little bit, but you, you can see more of the atrial activity. So what, what people would do next now? Uh, uh, any uh, questions, any comments? I need people to enter. So what would you do now uh, here? Uh, would you give... Uh, Cardiogenic shock, would you, would you uh, do cardioversion? Would you try different medicine? Would, would you uh, try adenosine, higher dose cardizem? Uh, I want some input here, uh, verapamil, nice, okay. <laughs> so everybody thinks verapamil, beautiful. So here's after verapamil was given. So here, verapamil was given, and then boom, five minutes after verapamil was given, tachycardia terminated, you can see. This is uh, now 1701, okay? So after five minutes, verapamil was given, tachycardia terminated. But, but what you notice now, the patient has a lot sinus rhythm, but you see now long PR interval. It's almost like a very long PR interval. You see this? So, uh, so this tachycardia terminated, the patient has a long PR interval, which is, uh, um, Maybe uh, Mansouri can uh, control the audio, the, uh, the, the, the participants' videos or stuff. So uh, tachycardia terminated with long PR interval. 
And, and the, the reason for this long PR interval is most likely the large dose of cardiazam the patient was put on. Okay, so, so this is probably not a pathological. But again, Ayman, this is an example of patient who have probably healthy conduction system, but when you hit it with a large dose of uh, uh, calcium channel blocker, two calcium channel blocker, IV, you can see, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna go back to, to this here to show. Uh, it gives you a long PR interval at baseline. You see this? So, so this is an example of that. Uh, and, and here you can, you can see that there's a P wave more clearly here. So let me go give you all the time scale of this patient. So this patient, when presented this, uh, okay, let me explain this to you here. This is the time at the bottom. And this is the heart rate. This is zero heart rate, 50, 100, 150, uh, 200 beats per minute, okay? And the heart rate, 85 beats per minute here is at that time here. See where there a little uh, triangle there. So heart rate here was 85 beats per minute between 50 and 100, okay? But let's go back to when the patient presented. When the patient presented, had a heart rate close to 200 beats per minute. They gave him adenosinic stuff, nothing happened. At this time here from, I don't know, 15, 30, whatever, until this time here, the patient was on the cardiazam drip. And you can see the cardiazam dropped the heart rate, but it's still 170, 180. If this is 150 line, the heart rate was in the 170, 180. Only after verapamil was given, you can see dramatic drop in the, um, in the heart rate. And then initially was a slow and then recovered slightly after they stopped, the, because we stopped the cardiazam drip immediately after that. The diagnosis was clear. Uh, and this is the patient's EKG after the uh, after conversion. So you can see sinus beat here, and then go, go some baseline winky back. So this is a patient having P wave and longer PR interval, patient having a winky back at baseline, and, and then this P wave here dropped. So so this is an example when you have a, a, a iatrog iatrogenic pathology in the AV nodal conduction system, like a, a lot of those of uh, intravenous uh, calcium channel blocker, you can see the P wave behaves in the typical decremental conduction and this blocks here. So this is a nice winky back cycle, but that's not pathological. This is just because we gave the patient a lot of calcium channel blockers in, in a short period of time. And back to this uh, uh, diagram here, because this is, shows you the time frame. This shows you how verapamil is, is so impactful in converting this tachycardia, okay? So I'm just gonna go quick uh, slides here. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this presentation, but for my uh, EP colleagues and the, and the the group here. So patient was taken to the EP lab and these tracings are induced in the EP lab. Uh, so uh, here, simple, just if you pay attention to, to maybe um, uh, the, the bottom part here, would say his uh, here, so you see patient was uh, running a ventricular tachycardia. This is the surface EKG lead one, two, and V1. These are tachycardia, so the patient was going fast. So the patient was in tachycardia. This is HRA, means high right atrium. So this is the atrium, and you can see the ventricle is much faster than the atrium, and the atrium is slower, and the atrium appears to be dissociated from the ventricle. You see here, the atrium and the ventricle happen at the same time, here, the atrium happened slightly after the ventricle, and here the atrium happened later after the atrium, and here the, the ventricle, the atrium happened later. So this is the EKGs where we were seeing some P wave hidden there and here, and uh, when we went to look at the telemetry strips. So you see, sorry, this for some reason that I'm not in control of this uh, PowerPoint. So 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 the, the the reason here, if when you see so the P wave sometimes on the surface EKG, in this case, you can see a P wave here, but you may not see this P wave. You may not see this P wave. You may not see P wave, this P wave. So this one here is exactly in the surface EKG as for example, um, uh, this one here, maybe this one here, or, or this one here, or this one here. So you see them, you see them uh, sporadically, every now and then, but this is intracardiac tracing. So this is confirmed. This is to be a, um, a ventricular tachycardia. And, and this is where we have here the same thing. This is a much faster speed. Sweep speed is about 100 here. 
Uh, and then this is the ablation catheter here. And the ablation catheter for the distal ablation catheter, you have the uh, tachycardia start with some potentials before the surface. So this is tachycardia on the spot on the posterior fascicle. You started here before the surface EKG. So if you measure time from here to here is way faster. So you know you're ahead of the tachycardia and, and then uh, you ablate the tachycardia terminated. And this is, it tells you uh, that this is the ablation catheter. The location of the ablation catheter here, this is his uh, electricity, this is his bundle, and you have the uh, signals of the posterior fascicle here on the, after the ablation. So it shows you successful, your on the posterior fascicle, you see the uh, intracardiac electrocardiogram, and then uh, you test the conduction, and the conduction is quite healthy at the end. These are beyond the, the scope. These are just for my uh, uh, EP friends here in the group to to. Uh, uh, often, uh, 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 enjoy uh, these. I think it, you did a great explanation, and there's nothing to add. يعني على الحالة هذه يعني واضح يعني أنت you explained it's vascular VT. Uh, بس عندي سؤال uh, practical question. Yeah. احنا طبعا نعرف والpatients yeah. اللي عندهم VT they meet an indication for secondary pre prevention for ICD implantation. So I, my right. colleagues, يعني cardiologists to internal medicine doctors, uh, is there an indication for ICD in this patient? يعني هل تبعت الكارديولوجيس أو الإيب بش يندر له ICD this patient يعني هذا هو سؤالي. بنشوف الإجابات يعني بس would like to know. Uh, if yes you or no? Recommend great question, ICD. Yusuf. Yeah, yes. yes or no? Yeah. Yes, yeah. great question, Yusuf. Very nice. Yes, yes or no? ICD, yes. No ICD, no. Please type it here in the ICD. ICD, no ICD. Okay, ICD, yes. Okay, we have one yes. Two yes. Three yes. Wow. Okay, go ahead, Yusuf. Give the answer, please. <تصفيق> طبعا ال 10% of VTs are idiopathic VTs يعني uh, يعني uh, اللي هم ال VT اللي هم يعني generally benign uh, they don't they're not associated with sudden cardiac death ومنهم الفاسكلر VT يعني الفاسكلر VT it's unlikely to cause sudden cardiac death يعني those patients يعني what I would do is get an echo if the ejection fraction is completely normal especially in a young patient أو كارديك إمراي هو كارديك إمراي موجود في ليبيا. There's no indication from ICD. لأن this is an uh, idiopathic VT. So the left bundle branch morphology or outflow tract uh, VT أو the fascicular VT they are generally benign. Uh, treatment اللي هو الكارديزم في الحالة زي هذه وفيراكميل أو الأبليشن. Definitely ablation is an excellent treatment للحالة هذه. But ICD is not indicated in this case. I agree. Thank you, Yusuf. The, the great point. I, I completely missed my attention. And in fact, this patient has both echo and MRI, and both were normal. And, uh, and this patient, and, and this patient underwent uh, uh, just this ablation procedure. And uh, we saw him two years later, he was doing fine. He works in the cables, like he goes high towers and uh, like very high towers. He works with a company called at and for connection cables. And he, he, his, his job is quite risky and we didn't give him ICD. Yeah, there was a classical idiopathic VT that was uh, ablated. Uh, great point, Yusuf. Uh, Khaled, I mean, uh, can you please give us your input yes. and comments, especially about the EKG, please? About this EKG or any prior EKGs so far? Uh... Whatever, uh, Khaled, I mean, I think uh, if you want to add to this case or, or prior, because we have one more last case and we'll be done. Yeah, but uh, at the time, then it will an hour and a half. I think uh, we should okay. focus on this. There is no time left. Maybe we'll give the okay. last 15, 20 minutes to the discussion. Dr. Khaled Buzgaya, I hope that you are available with us. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Uh, as usual, great presentation from the master of EKG. Um, a few points, I think, very practical point. I think when I started training Fathi, we the P wave was the forgotten. Uh, element in the EKG. And I remember recently we were uh, attending a conference with Dr. George Klein and say that recently he's been seeing more mistakes by people imagining P waves. Um, so while it's very important to look for the P wave, but I think we went to some extreme sometimes we imagine P wave. I think for me, instead of trying to imagine this is what P wave, 
you should try to prove this is a P wave. That's my tip number one. And that, Fatih, you, uh, I think you covered that by um, maybe giving adenosine, carotid massage, uh, giving some AV node blockade, or sometimes even doing different type of EKG like Lewis lead or something like that. So that's my tip number one is yes, look for the P wave, but don't overlook the P wave. Sometimes you may think this is P wave and it's not. Um, second thing is um, it's very important to compare. We always think about the P wave, but we forgot about the morphology of the P wave. So it's very important to always look for the EKG, resting EKG, and to compare the sinus P wave morphology with what we think P wave morphology. Another tip I want to highlight is it's very confusing to say AV dissociations. Um, is, does this mean one to one, one to two, or there is no association at all? And with VT, you may have retrograde conduction, but you may also have sinus node marching through and you still have VT and they are completely dissociated. Um, but uh, so the other thing is, um, it's very easy for especially junior doctors with us in the group, whenever you see a broad QRS, whether is it um, tachycardia or not, there is only six possibility and try to work through it one by one, it will make your life a lot easier. Is this VT? Is this some form of SVT with aberrancy? Is this pre-excited rhythm? These are the top three. Then the last three, which are easy to rule out, is this paced rhythm? Is this artifact? Or is there electrolyte imbalance? There is nothing else out of these six category will give you a broad QRS. So if you try to have a systematic approach when you see an EKG, uh, this will help you sort out the differential of VT. Now, a tip to you all that even senior electrophysiologists like Dr. Idris um, will find it difficult to differentiate between the different type of tachycardia. We could never get it right. However, if you're not sure, always treat uh, any broad complex tachy as a VT. I think that's the teaching point. Now, all algorithms, we know that Fatih and Yusuf, like Brugada algorithm, AVR algorithms, all algorithm has shortfalls and nothing is perfect. So you always have to use your clinical judgment. Um, you, we don't treat AKG, we treat patients. So take patient context into your assessment and make the right decision. Remember to compare your AKG with the resting AKG. Uh, artifact, Fatih, your case, a very interesting case, artifact, because usually you will see the artifact in the limb lead, not in the chest lead. And my tip, whenever you see something like that, some modern AKG machine, you could go back and do a rhythm strip. But um, the hint, usually, if you have something look like a torsad or VT, and the patient is eating their breakfast, then it's unlikely to be a torsad or VF because they're not, they're not going to be well. But I agree with you, artifact, you need to look at the QRS, whether is it marching through, and it tend to be more the limb lead rather than the chest lead, but it could be, as in your example, it could be any lead. Um, in your last case, interestingly, the fascicular VT is a typical example of um, a VT which break all the rules for VT versus SVT with aberrancy differentiations. It looks like a bundle branch morphology. It terminates with verapamil. Uh, most patients are uh, not hemodynamically compromised. The QRS is not broad. The uh, nadir to S uh, duration is very narrow. Uh, again, fascicular VT, whenever you see a young patient with normal heart, and I think this is what Yusuf point is very important. Normal heart VT is benign. Usually they do very well with medical therapy or ablation. And most of them, if they don't have a norm, if they have a normal LV, they don't need an ICD. I think this is my summary in tip and tricks, but I think Fat he did an excellent job, and, and uh, I'll be open to any questions. Doctor uh, Doctor Yusuf Adrat, لو عندك أي إضافة regarding any prior EKGs. بارك الله فيكم محاضر ممتازة طبعا زي ما قال خالد ماستر في EKGs ما شاء الله عليه دكتور فتحي. وخالد انت ايوه سامرايز 3 دي ول يعني انا بس الحاجه الوحيده بس 
يعني هو الصمري اللي قالوا الاثنين يعني اي اي ثينك هاو تو ابروتش ان اي كي جي ولا انترا كارديك اي ثينك احنا الاي بيز وي ثينك ان ديفرنت واي وي ثينك اوف يعني الاي ويف بروحها الفنتركل بروحها والاي في نوت بروحها يعني يعني how many p ways you have can you know if you look at the ekg that's هذه uh, الحاجه الحين متاحه لنا نشوفوها عاده when we first see the patient how طبعا we always see the ventricle لازم او اللي هي ار اس كومبلكس الفنتركل بيت لازم نحاول ندوروا على p waves to see the relation بين ال p يعني treat ال p wave or atrium as a separate chamber شنو هي الالكتريكال اكتيفيتي موجوده في الاتريوم شيء ركز اكتيفيتي موجوده في الفنتركل ذن تراي تو كورليت تراي حاول تربط ما بينهم مصدوس فهمتني؟ ف هذا مجرد توضيح حكي او ديفرنت ابروتش للاريتميا هذه يجيب نقطه مهمه اعتقد دكتور فتحي تقريبا بكري ذكرت على ادينوسين ادينوسين از ريلي امبورتنت يعني لو عندك نارو كومبلكس تايب كارديا دونت هيزيتيت تو يوز ادينوسين لان ادينوسين از جونت بلوك ذا اي في نود اند اتس جونت شو يو شو صاير في الاتريوم شنو الريليشن بين الاتريوم والفنتركل؟ اف يو يوز اي في انترافينس ادينوسين، ذيس كود بي ان اي في نودال ديبندنت اريتميا زي الاي في ان ار تي او الاي في ار تي فيرسز اتريو فلتر مثلا. ف اولويز ثينك لما تشبه اي كي جي اتريوم فنتركل والاي في نود كسبرت انتيتيز او ميكانيزمز اللي انفولف في الاريتميا. بارك الله فيكم، شكرا منصور على الفرصه وشكرا فتحي وخالد. لا مبسوطين جدا والله اني فيري اكسايتد توداي اي ديد ليرن ا لوت اونستلي سو فار دكتور فتحي ممكن ما علقتش على اجابه السؤال هذا ممكن تعلق عليها yeah. قبل يا yeah. شكرا يا ثانك يو ام سوري توك لونج وشكرا طبعا خالد ويوسف من كم كم ذس از جاست ا نايس يعني تو هير ايفري بوديز انبوت و كومبليتلي اجري وذ اول ذا كومنتس سو جاست بيفور وي فينيش ليتس جو باك تو ذس فيري فيري فيرست كيس وي ستارت دو ريمبر ذس از ا 43 يير اولد فيميل with history of a shock by the her ICD, okay? So is it, the question is this, uh, is this, uh, we asked this question before, is this patient in sinus rhythm? Yes, no, or maybe. So if you think it's in sinus rhythm, you're sure, say yes. If you uh, think this patient is not in sinus rhythm, number two, or this patient may be in sinus rhythm, number three. So, uh, Uh, I don't know uh, what if people want to revise the question now after the first answer. I think in the, when the, we started, there was some answers one, some answers two. So uh, I think that the, 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 the point here, what you see here, this EKG, so this is the EKG alone of the ventricle or not the EKG. This is the intracardiac electrogram from the ventricle. But if you take the intracardiac electrogram fully, if you take the full picture, Uh, you can tell that this patient, the atrium was in sinus, but the ventricle in V fib. So uh, I thought this is just a, a good illustration for people to think about the two chambers. So even if the whole activity is the biggest, the most important, the clinically relevant activity is the patient in v- VF, like in this case, this is almost like a surface EKG. It's a far field tracing. This is intracardiac tracings. So although the patient is in ventricular tachycardia in the ventricle, always, always think what's happening in the atrium, okay? So this is a polymorphic VT, doesn't sell any PTP. Torsad, torsad is, is a different diagnosis, but this is what we call polymorphic VT or VF. And, but this, there, think about what's the atrium. It's just try to create this mindset of what is happening in the atrium. Sometimes it's impossible to know what's happening in the atrium unless you have a lead in the atrium, like in this case, right? Uh, but you learn from handling devices. It's many patients, they will have AFib and v, they go to VT. And when they shocked, they go to sinus rhythm. So it, is, it can be very, uh, uh, very tricky. So this patient, the answer to this one may be in sinus rhythm because based on, based on this tracing alone, we don't know what's happening in the atrium. So the correct answer of this one should be maybe, not yes, because we, we don't know We don't see what's happening in the atrium. And you cannot say no because we don't know what's happening in the atrium. So the answer to this one is maybe. So if you get this concept, I think you, you probably get the morale of the whole uh, uh, presentation. This is after the patient was converted to sinus rhythm. And these are the few tips. I'm going to leave them here for uh, any for people just to collect them and find, have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, 
أو سؤال للأكسبرت بانل أو دكتور فتحي أنا دائما أقول للشباب لما يجوا تدربوا معي الأسبوع الماضي نقول لهم I think in the atria and ventricle are two separate hearts فحاولت نوصل المعلومة هذه ما قدرتش للأمانة ما استوعبهاش فسألتهم سؤال قلت لهم لو الشخص عنده atrial fibrillation عنده AFib وجينا we cut the AV node from the ventricle what will happen to the AFib would it terminate maybe yes they said maybe they said yes it might not sustain if you got the AV node so I told them simple example if your neighbor house on fire and you get the electricity from your house for, from the other neighbor, and the fire is not in your house, do you think if you cut the wire, like does the fire go away just by cutting the wire between your house and uh, your neighbor house? No, it will continue to be in fire. But so both atria and both ventricle, electrically connected by single wire, for so both of them, they can behave the way that they like. فمعناتها مش بارت في السيركت فلو تتخيل المعلومة بالطريقة هذه لو أنت عندك في تي داون and LV or RV, it shouldn't be affecting what's happening in the, in the atrium, exception with AV or VA conduction. يعني. فمعنى الكلام لو تفكر فيه من two separate starts, we we'll always start with the P wave. أنا دائماً حتى أسأل سؤال نقول دائماً, which one is more important, the rhythm or the ST segment elevation? نقول في البداية دائماً leaning to the interventional guys, ST elevation, STEMI for example, it's emergency, but the rhythm, you have some time. You can think of VT, complete heart block, sinus, but always I think the money shot for, as mentioned throughout this lecture, if you want to master the AKG, as the master as we had today in our session, is to look at the P wave. Find the P wave, you will find your money. Where is the money is where is the B wave uh, and the heart? You find the B wave, you will find you will find your answer. But if we had a question before we finish, yeah, Mansour, there's a question for the audience because it's the main presentation, like I said, Fatihi and your host Yusuf, that it's very important to understand what the atrium is doing and what the ventricle is doing. And the relationship between the PP interval and the VV interval and then the AV interval. So we're always talking about AV dissociation and AV relation. And usually the concept is when more V than A is VT. And when more A than V is not VT. So we want to see if there was any suggestion from the audience يعطونا example of situation where the V more than the A was still not VT, well a situation where the A is more than the V and it's still VT. فممكن ممكن تكتبوا في الشات box يعني الإجابات. فنعطوكم ثيرتي. This, this will be a Mansour very good uh, uh, just a stimulation for what Fathi was saying. It's very important to not ignore each chamber. It doesn't mean if this chamber is doing something, the other chamber is not. So this just to see if we could come up with some differential. Let's start, uh, Mansoor, by saying, what if there is more Vs than A, but it's not VT? Do you think this is fair, Fatih? Maybe this is not fair. So so. But <laughs> but yeah, no. You go ahead. I, I think uh, it's good to, uh, to explain it. Yeah, yeah. complete ventricular premature ventricular contractions. You don't land V more than A. Yeah, that's a different. I think that's a point that you got. Very important. You got. I mean, honestly, it's a point that you got. ممتازة جدا يعني هو think of it يعني yeah. uh, you can have double arrhythmias حاجة اسمها double yeah. arrhythmia those arrhythmias at the same time تصير عادي كل chamber بروحها very good you can have a, a, a fib and VTAC right ممكن تعطيهم الهند يعني ايه the best the best answer uh, as Yusuf say you could have double tachycardia مثلا you could still have a fib and you still have VTAC and the A, for example, the flutter wave is faster than the VT cycle length. So this is an example of that you have more A than V, but you still have ventricular tachycardia. An example of um, if you have more Vs than A, uh, for example, sometimes it is slightly more advanced, but you may have, for AV, example, AVNRT, would right. block in the pathway, whether retrograde. 
Yes. So if it's the lower pathway, then you'll have A more than V. If it's the upper pathway, you'll have more Vs than A. So the, the moral of the, the story is, is think that each chamber separately first and then think about the link between the two. Well, the best example is dual tachycardia, atrial flutter and ventricular yeah. tachycardia. The VT could be faster than the flutter. The flutter could be faster. This is just a simple example. But if you want to look into more details, there is even RT and slightly more advanced stuff. But this just to highlight that it's not all about AV relationship. You need to think about each chamber separate, then link them, and then make your conclusion. Yeah, Khaled, let me add, add one thing because this is this very interesting. So I, I think the the V more than A's and A's, I see that more common in page and people like in providers who look at the intracardiac tracing. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, where especially, you know, fellows when they start looking at uh, pacemaker tracings and they, you know, patient comes with a shock or something and they try, try to, you know, correlate which started first, this or this. So that's because, you know, you, you see the atrium. Luckily for general practice, they don't see much of the uh, atrial activities most of the time. So a double tachycardia can exist and can, can go unrecognized. And sometimes it's not that, you know, it doesn't change. Like the case I just showed, the VT, the VF, when the ICD shocked the patient sinus rhythm and the patient was in sinus rhythm. So sometimes it, it goes unrecognized and it, does, uh, it doesn't matter clinically. But the, the problem with more V that the more V's than A's is VT or more A's than V's is AT, that concept itself is much more common among you know people who look at the intracardiac electrocardiogram. You see what I'm saying? And that's where the source of confusion can be. I see it more like we're we're with these scenarios. However, there's there's you know there it can be very interesting in uh, when you have a surface EKG. Uh, where uh, you have both tachycardias at the same time, and then becomes almost impossible for people to diagnose without having an intracardiac electrogram. Yeah, it's a very good <laughs> point. Very. Uh... Yeah. 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 ففي الختام نحب نشكر جميع الحضور اللي حضورهم معنا طوال هذه المحاضرة. ونشكر الاكسبرت بانل الدكتور خالد بوزقية والدكتور يوسف الدرات وديفينتلي نشكر الدكتور فتح دريس انلايتنج اس وذ ليرن ا لوت فروم يو توداي فور ذس ليكشر وان شاء الله نوعد الحضور ذس از ذا بيجنينج هذه البداية وسم تايم از ذس وان فور يو اتس ا بريد اند باتر وسم تايم از فيري هارد اند ديفيكالت تو اندرستاند سو تيك يور تايم ذس ليكشر ويل بي ريكوردد And hopefully this is the beginning. Well, EKG learning comes over the years with the experience and the mumarasa. So, we don't forget that we have been with the Libyan Cardiac Society 9th Conference in the city of Benghazi from 29-12-31-12. We hope that everyone can join us in the conference. And in the end, peace be upon you and peace be upon you.